As always on a Thursday, we speak to an investment professional from Citadel. This week, we speak to Director of Citadel Fiduciary. Speaking to us from Pretoria, it's Tunis Ailes. Tunis, while the market is relatively quiet, while we are waiting for all sorts of things to happen, and while the JSC is a quiet affair, there are certain things that are constantly with us. One of those is tax, and the other one is trust. Now, trust regulation seems to change to me every six months or so, whether it be the midterm budget policy statement and intentions on trust or whether it be the budget itself with new regulation on trust i don't know but certainly it's a dynamic environment and what's come to the fore recently is loans to trust and tax treatment of those loans to trust i understand it's been a fairly dynamic area what do you make of it thank you Lindsay. yes it's been an extremely dynamic area in the last two years or so with uh, developments specifically on how trusts are funded now, you may know that in the past we funded trust by way of interest-free loans where you transferred your assets into a trust. In return, you have an interest-free loan. That loan doesn't grow while your assets grow in the trust. That's the basic trust estate planning uh, technique. Yeah. Now, what's happened uh, since last 2017 March when uh, the legislation came into force is that Treasury decided that those interest-free loans can't be interest-free anymore. And if they are interest-free and left as such, there needs to be a tax implication. Now, that follows on from, the, it's, uh, it's not what the Davis Tax Committee recommended, but it follows from the investigation to say that you can't cap your estate and that the government leaves out on all their estate into over all these years. We need to get some tax back from you. So what they did is to deem an interest rate on those loans. In other words, they would say if you don't charge at least the official interest rate, which is currently 7.5%, right. then we will deem that interest that you have foregone as a donation to the trust, triggering donations tax in your name. Now, that's the long and the short of it. The problem with that is, as I mentioned, it's been going for many, many years. There were no amnesty, nothing. So now people are in the situation where on a fairly big loan account, they have to start paying donations tax. Hmm. And immediately we got, uh, we started getting the questions, what now? Do we terminate these trusts? Yes, it's a possibility to terminate the trust. But remember, if you're going to terminate the trust, there's going to be a lot of costs involved. That's Sorry, Chunis, before you go on, what is better to pay the official interest rate, which you say is, is 7.5%, which we know it's 7.5%, but it changes all the time, but let's call it 7.5%. What is better just to say, okay, uh, 7.5% will now be implemented for the duration till the termination of the loan, or is it best to say, well, I'd rather pay the donations tax, which is the most uh, interest rate efficient, if you like? Critical, important question to consider. Because when this all came out, a number of the clients and accountants said that, okay, let's just start charging the interest rate. But it's actually wrong because if you invoke this specific section that triggers donations tax, donations tax are charged at 20%. Wow. Whereas when you charge, um, when you charge the official interest rate, that may be as high as 45%. So it's definitely better to rather invoke this specific section, I'm referring to Section 7C, than it is to start charging an interest rate. In most cases, there are some exceptions. Okay, so we've got a situation now where their interest must be charged on these loans. They can no longer be interest-free. And existing loans, which are in place, also are affected. Typically, how long are these loans? When it comes to someone loaning this money, do they do it for a long duration, a short duration? What is the normal angle here? Because obviously people have seen an angle and they're exploiting it. So what would it be? Typically a five-year loan, a 10-year loan? How does it work? These loans are uh, typically on the, let's call it the never-never basis. Ah. In other words, you make this loan, it never gets repaid, no interest are charged. And when you pass away, let's say, for instance, in 20 years' time, that loan is still exactly on the same amount or slightly lower than it was 20 years ago while your assets grew. And that, Lindsay, is exactly the reason why they introduced this kind of legislation. So this has been legal tax avoidance within the framework of the uh, the tax regime. But, uh, of course, with you know, the parlous situation of the South African economy and tax receipts, the tax authorities have said, we have to close this loophole. Simple as that. 
simple as that, or it was just estate planning. But it was seen as a legal tax avoidance by a treasury. But of course, from us planners, we saw it as a clever estate planning. But unfortunately, that was closed to a large extent. There are some exemptions, though, that one needs to consider. Does this, in your opinion, Jonas, mean another sort of a brick in the wall that's been removed of the trust regime, if you like? In other words, trusts are now becoming less and less attractive because of the latest uh, implications of tax and loans, etc., that we've been speaking about. In other words, trusts are becoming less attractive. Trusts are becoming less attractive from a tax planning point of view. There you are 100% right. But, and this is something that we've always maintained, Tax should not be your sole driver for creating a trust. And I know it's been done effectively over many years. But if you go back to the fundamentals of trust law, that's been around more than a thousand years, uh, coming from the English law originally. It was there to protect assets, protect assets against creditors, to protect assets for your descendants, and so on. Now, if you come back to those fundamentals, trusts still play a very important role and will continue to do so. Let's take the situation of uh, protecting assets for your descendants in a trust and making sure that everything is in place to continue running your businesses, for instance, after you've passed away without having to go through an estate. Let's take the situation of a child receiving a grant because of medical or a lump sum because of something like medical negligence. That's where we still continue using trusts. Let's take the situation of uh, protecting assets against a creditor. So there are still reasons for trusts, the same fundamentals that's always been around, but they are definitely closing on certain tax benefits that were available in the past. And given the, as we said in the first part of this uh, conversation, given the dynamic nature of tax regulation and trust regulation, one should always consult a financial advisor when uh, setting up a trust. One must be very clear as to why one is setting up this trust. Absolutely. You need a professional to assist with considering all the repercussions and reasons for setting up this trust, as well as now, all of a sudden, exactly how you're going to approach the funding of the trust and what the result of that's going to be. Now, that's for setting up of a trust, but also if you should find yourself in a situation where you have a loan to a trust and you're concerned about this legislation, like all tax legislation, the Section 70 gets extremely complicated to interpret, especially with further amendments that came into force in December. So you need a professional to assist you to see if this really applies to you, number one, and it's not for one of the exemptions, but also what the quantum is. If we're talking about an important trust in your planning and your family's planning, and the tax implication, the new tax implication is only a couple of thousand grand per year, it may very well be worth just to continue normally and not just say, because this came into force, now you need to get out of this trust all of a sudden. But it, as I mentioned, in order to do that, you need to speak to a professional. Yes, it's a minefield, and uh, I will reiterate that. Speak to a professional. Don't try and do it yourself, because these things that we're speaking about now with Tunis Ehlers are maybe going to change in the next six months to a year, so it may be it redundant in a short space of time. Tunis, thank you very much for your advice. That's Tunis Ehlers, who is a director of Citadel Fiduciary, speaking to us from Pretoria.